Welcome to Anna Tiger's News. I'm Alexis Richer. Thanks for joining us today for the news we've been watching for you. House Republicans on Monday released their long-awaited plan for unraveling former President Barack Obama's health care law, a package that would scale back the government's role in helping people afford coverage and likely leave more Americans uninsured. House committees plan to begin voting on the 123-page legislation Wednesday, launching what could be the year's defining battle in Congress and capping seven years of Republican vows to repeal the 2010 law. Though GOP leaders ex expect a boost from the backing of the Trump administration, divisions remain and GOP success is not a guarantee. The plan would repeal the statute's unpopular fines on people who don't carry health insurance. It would replace income-based subsidies the law provides to help millions of Americans pay premiums with age-based tax credits that may be skimpier for people with low incomes. Those payments would phase out for higher-earning people. The bill would continue Obama's expansion of Medicaid to additional low-earning Americans until 2020. Beginning then, states adding Medicaid recipients would no longer receive the additional federal funds the statute has provided. The Homeland Security Department is considering separating children from parents caught crossing the Mexican border illegally, Secretary John Kelly said Monday. Kelly said such a move would be part of a broader effort to discourage families from making the dangerous trek across Mexico to the U.S. border. He confirmed that he's considering the action during an interview with CNN Monday. The plan has previously been reported by several news outlets. Tens of thousands of parents and children fleeing violence and poverty, mostly from Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala, have been caught crossing the border illegally in recent years. Generally, the families are detained for a few days or weeks before being released into the United States to wait for an immigration judge to decide their fate. Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson on Monday compared slavery to immigration in the United States a view the experts on slavery called inaccurate and a misleading reading of American history. Carson, who was confirmed as HUD secretary last week and is the only black member of President Donald Trump's cabinet, was talking about the work ethic and dreams of immigrants who came to the United States through Ellis Island in his first speech at the department. Quote, there were other immigrants who came here on the bottom of slave ships, worked even longer, even harder for less, Carson said as he walked across the stage holding a microphone. U.S. missile launchers and other equipment needed to set up a controversial missile defense system has arrived in South Korea, the U.S., and South Korean mil military said Tuesday, a day after North Korea test-fired four ballistic missiles into the ocean near Japan. The plans to deploy the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System within this year have angered not only North Korea, but also China and Russia, which see the system's powerful radars as, sec as a security threat. China responded quickly, saying it will take, quote, necessary measures to protect itself and warning that the U.S. and South Korea should be prepared to bear the consequences. U.S.-backed Iraqi forces were fighting their way through a government complex in the heart of western Mosul after storming the buildings in an overnight raid and were facing fierce counterattacks Tuesday from the Islamic State group. According to an Iraqi officer, the troops hoisted an Iraqi flag on the complex of buildings in the Dawasa neighborhood earlier in the morning, hailing the federal police units who stormed the compound as heroes. By noon, troops on the ground said the complex has not yet been fully secured and that they are battling a wave of intense ISIS counterattacks. A new satellite can capture lightning strikes from space, giving forecasters a better picture of what's happening during a storm. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration today released video shot by the GO-16 satellite of a severe storm above Texas on February 14th. The storm was strong enough to trigger tornadoes. NOAA launched a satellite in November, and it, take, and it has been sending back images clearer than any previous NOAA satellite. The bus size satellite hovers at 22,300 miles above the Earth. We could see some lightning this week as some real changes in our weather is on the way. Here's Mr. Charbonneau with the forecast. As expected, we're in for a wet day as persistent rain showers greeted us this morning and continue throughout the day. Now, the rain that we've been seeing, while well, that continues tonight as high temperatures of 50 begin to fall back into the mid-30s overnight. We remain mild for most of the day Wednesday, but the rain showers continue. We'll still hit a high in the low 50s, 
But one thing we're going to notice as the day moves on tomorrow, the wind. By the end of the morning, the wind is really going to pick up in advance of a new weather system. The winds could gust in spots up to 40 miles per hour. That's because a cold front swoops in overnight on Wednesday, dropping our temperatures below freezing. We're cold for Thursday, cold for Friday. And as winds set up from the northwest, we could even see some lake effect snow showers. That's the forecast. We hope you have a great day. Take care. Does Syracuse need one more win to secure an at-large bid? They'll get that chance tomorrow. Here's Josh with sports. The ACC tournament starts today from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It's the first time the tournament has moved north and features first-round games Tuesday. Syracuse will take on Miami on Wednesday and at noon. The Orange beat the Hurricanes a month ago in the Carrier Dome. While most experts believe the Orange has done enough to earn an NCAA at-large bid, there are some who believe Syracuse is still a game short. Miami comes in having lost its two last games to fall out of the top 25 rankings. And speaking of the NCAA tournament, the Lemoyne College men's team is headed to the Division II tournament this Saturday. They're seated number one in its regional and will host Mer Merrimack on Saturday, beginning at 4 o'clock. Andrew Bogut went from being perhaps the final puzzle piece to another missing one for the Cavaliers. The champions remain incomplete. Just an hour or so after saying how excited he was to be joining one of the league's deepest teams, Bogut broke his left leg after playing just 58 seconds in his Cleveland debut on Monday night, an injury that could force the Cavs to resume their search for a big man. Bogut had just been welcomed with a roaring ovation by Cleveland's crowd when his shin banged into the knee of Miami's Okara White in the first minute of the second quarter. Bogut immediately knew his leg was broken, and LeBron James said he heard Bogut's bone crack on the, on the collision. And finally, Megan Rapino says she will respect a new U.S. Soccer Federation policy that says national team players, quote, shall stand respectfully during national anthems. The policy was approved last month, but came to light Saturday before the U.S. women's national team lost to English, England in a She Believes Cup match. A Fox Soccer analysis posted on an image of the rule on Twitter. The policy comes after Rapino knelt during the anthem at a pair of national anthem at a pair of national team matches this year. The midfielder has said she wanted to express solidarity with former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who knelt last season in an attempt to bring attention to racial inequality. That's a look at sports. Have a great day. I'm Josh. Tickets are now on sale for the drama club spring musical Cinderella. All tickets are five dollars until five p.m. Thursday, March eighth. After March 8th, ticket prices go up to $10. Get your pre-sale tickets now from any cast member or Mr. Coughlin in room 104. We're going to be there to record the musical and we'll have a link to it on the district's website by Friday afternoon. The French Honor Society is pleased to sponsor their annual Mardi Gras Magic event due to take place on Tuesday, March 14th from 6 to 7.30 in the main foyer of the high school. Entrance fee is $2. All completed Dollars for Scholars applications must be submitted by March 18th, 2017 to be considered for this year's scholarships. That's all for us today. We're back here again on Friday. For the staff of I'm the Tigers News, I'm Alexis Fritcher. Have a great rest of your day.